about one more song before we're going to start your program. But if you would begin to take your seats now, those of you who are not seated, that would be a good help for us to stay on time this evening. And I ruined this day. Staying on time is really, really important. Most of you guys, you know, we're going to go home at some point. So please take your seats, and we'll get the we'll get the uh, program started with just another song or two. For now, the rock and soul continuing for you. Thank you. 
your seats, everybody. We'll keep going until they tell us that they're ready. Jerry, you just tell us when you're ready, I think. We'll just keep playing. We're going to play a song that's perfect for Atlantic City, I think. I think. Because it's about them. No, it's not about them. Good evening, everyone. Hello. Thank you, and welcome to the 18th Annual New Jersey Conference, Statewide Conference of EMS. We're pleased to have you here and excited to present to you the awards program. What I'd like you to do now, would you please rise for the presentation of colors? Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh. 
Please remain standing. Join me in a moment of silence to honor those that gave the ultimate sacrifice this last year. Thank you to University Hospital EMS, Jersey City Medical Center EMS for being our honor guard. You may be seated. It's now my distinct honor to welcome Nancy Kelly Goodstein, Acting Director of the Office of Emergency Medical Services with the New Jersey Department of Health for some opening remarks.
Good evening and welcome to this, our 18th annual EMS Awards program. Would all of the nominees for tonight's awards please stand to be recognized. Thank you. I'm once again grateful to be here this evening with all of you. We received over 180 nominations for recognition this year. It is now my pleasure to introduce Kathleen Bennett, the Commissioner of the New Jersey Department of Health. Well, good evening, everybody. And I'm going to mess up this microphone. I want to thank you all for everything you've done over this past year. And I've got to tell you, it has been one heck of a year. And so I am so glad that we've had more than 800 people join us for the 12th annual statewide EMS conference. Before I really get started, though, I want to really quickly acknowledge Nancy Kelly Goodstein, our Acting Director of the Office of EMS. <clears throat> I know I don't have to tell you folks this. She is a tireless, tireless champion for all that you do and has put so much effort together with her team. And so I want to thank all of our folks from DOH. I'm seeing you at different tables. Um, and if you don't mind, just stand up for a quick second because I want you all to, you know, kind of acknowledge and give them some applause because the work that goes into pulling this conference together is more than what anyone can really imagine. It's been countless hours over the past few days here on site, but countless hours and planning just to get this together because we've had over 100 sessions, we've had over 800 participants. This is a huge effort. So Nancy, for you and your team, thank you so much. And if you'd all stand up for a round of applause. <clears throat> it is a phenomenal job. Um, I've got to tell you, New Jersey EMS, if this conference is any indication, you are a national leader in emergency medical services. And I can tell you, you can go to a national conference, it is not on par with what you guys accomplish here over these past few days. It is amazing. You've learned new techniques, you've learned best practices, you know what to do when you go back to the field because you've learned new information. We've had national and international leaders come here to share what they know and what they have seen in practice, whether it is from France or whether you're streaming to other states when you're doing your sim games. Literally, New Jersey is a place to come to, to learn from, and for us to learn from others so we can apply what you know, is so needed. You know, we're the state that has what we call the most dangerous mile in America. It is so critical what you learn. I wanna thank everybody because you know, I took a look and I actually asked for some numbers. Anybody that knows me knows I like to like, you know, boil this down. What does it really mean? And when we say the EMS community, we're now talking about 32,120 certified EMTs together with 1,812 of our certified paramedics that responded to 1.8 million 911 calls this past year. So to all of you, many, many thanks for your service. <clears throat> You know, I take a look and all I think to myself is, you are the critical lifeline. You are the ones that people are looking to help in life-threatening circumstances. And I said this last year, you know, when other people are running away, you're running towards. And every single one of you is viewed by this sense and the spirit of volunteerism, of wanting to help, 
and wanting to do more and better for people that need it. And so the service that you offer gives them dignity and grace under what are really difficult circumstances for each and every one of the patients that you see. You know, it doesn't matter really what the call is, and I've seen a whole bunch this year, whether it's heart attacks or strokes or women that are giving birth in places other than their homes, even, on their route to um, hospitals. Uh, we've seen, I think, just about every type of circumstance. And then, you know, in addition to the natural disasters, we unfortunately had the train derailment up in Hoboken, and we saw our EMS task force, we saw our EMS community locally come together and not just actually control a scene, but appropriately triage and get patients to the right locations. And that's why we had 116 survivors. Congratulations, all of you, for a job well done. Now, I'm not going to do a year in review, although I was close to doing that. But one of the things I do also want to mention is that we're not just helping out here at home, whether it was the flooding in South Carolina and we had a bunch of units go down there to help out the victims, whether it's actually making sure that you're sharing your best practices with others and bringing in more volunteers to your squads. You've all been involved this year in making sure that we have the best possible EMS services, that you're sharing the best possible techniques, and that you're always pushing the envelope to get even better at what you do. And in a couple of minutes, you're gonna have awards. And I gotta tell you, I don't know how people make decisions about who to give awards to, because I'm sure each and every one of you that's sitting here in the audience can give us a story about a colleague or about someone else in the community who has really stepped up, gone above and beyond, and done something so incredible that you want to shout about it. And so for all of our nominees, as well as the awardees, a huge congratulations and a huge thank you but we have also all these other personal stories that I just want to make sure we recognize. You know, <clears throat> one of the things that I thought was really interesting is that when awards came in, they weren't just for yourselves and your colleagues. And so one of our awardees is going to be a young girl named Skylar. And one of the things I thought was so interesting about her story is that, you know, they're sitting at a family dinner and it's a day like any other day, a meal like any other meal, when her grandfather had an issue because he started choking on something. And her mom knew what to do. Her mom tried to do the Heimlich and dislodge this, and it didn't help. And he was losing breath, and they're calling 911, and a 14-year-old knew that her grandfather needed CPR, started compressions, dislodged it, and luckily, he's still here with us today and with her family today because of the work and the skills that she was able to apply. So you have these amazing personal stories of things in the community, and we hear about it you know, people of all ages. It doesn't have to be an adult. It's children learning also what to do. Um, we have other stories that go on, but I want to take a quick moment to recognize, and I didn't see him earlier, but we have Dr. Marcus as one of our awardees. Dr. Marcus, hands up. I don't actually see him, but I just want to kind of, I want to really quickly acknowledge him because he has been the head of the New Jersey Poison um, Information System for years. And I like to call him a tireless advocate. Um, and tireless is what I really, really mean because he has always been pounding on what can PIES do to help EMS services and what can we all do as a state in a better way to make sure that children and others are not poisoned. He has done a phenomenal job and he just recently retired in June. And you know, I think actually acknowledging him now tonight at the tail end of his career is a beautiful tribute to what has been a long career which has really saved lives in our state and has actually brought new things to the practice of emergency medical services. So many special thanks to Dr. Marcus. <clears throat> now in addition to Dr. Marcus, I'm gonna give a shout out for one more person. And this person has had more than 50 years of service. Think about that, 50 years, half a century, two decades of it has been on front line as well as in the administrative officer positions in EMS and has been a tireless advocate and has been you know, actually even on every fundraising effort at the forefront. So you've got, I think, a tremendous number of people here tonight that you're going to be acknowledging 
formally with an award, you have everyone else that's sitting at the table. And as they like to say to us when we were back in law school, look to your left, look to your right, look in front of you, look behind you. Every single person has a great story to tell and every single one of you has been involved in responding to 1.8 million calls. All I'm thankful for is that when a call is made, that you are there, ready, willing, able to respond and to save lives. Thank you so much for your service. We truly appreciate it. From the governor, from the Department of Health, we admire what you do. We're happy to support this conference and we're happy to support this ever growing conference. Um, I think it reflects the importance of your contributions and it reflects our investment in you. I wanna thank you again. Have a wonderful night tonight. Okay, please enjoy the dinner. After dinner, we will begin the awards program.